way in night was actually almost as nerve-wracking as fight night itself if it hadn't already sunk in by that point it sure as hell did by then two big tables set up where all the contenders would kind of line up on either side from each corner everyone's looking at each other that they're gonna fight we each got a chance to like go up and talk a little smack to to the person that we were gonna fight there was some intensity building up and they're all stepping up to the plate or the scale i should say yeah, Bet was there with his girlfriend and he brought his baby. I told you seeing today, I said, Bet needs this win. If I wasn't fighting him, I would cheer for him. You know what it's going to be? But I'm fighting him, so I'll cheer for myself. It's going to be the fight of okay. the night. You put everything on the line on this one, Bet? I'm going to leave everything in the ring tomorrow night. Nothing, 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 bet, nothing safe for later. face to face and he brought a baby up in the middle like there was no animosity nothing the weigh-in was really stress-free for me and erica because we were within like a pound of each other so we didn't have to do anything with some people had to like starve themselves or eat all day i was up and shay was down on weight and we had to be within seven pounds of each other we were both kind of scared so she was like trying to drop weight like crazy she was very committed uh we had her going into like the full what what the guys who were training for nationals do is you had her in, in the garbage bag, she was doing her sprints, doing everything she needed to do. So I didn't eat, I didn't drink any water, I just sweat. Just shed all this weight and I'm like eating donuts. She's going to be lighter than you. 37.5. Four pounds apart from each other and I ended up being lighter than Shay. Before I even trained, we're qualified for this Aprons for Gloves. I think I was peaking the scales at like 265. And so when I stepped up there and I was 209, you know, it was a good feeling. Once the weigh-in started, the next 24 hours, our job is going to be to focus on the actual fight at hand. Tomorrow's a big night for you, man. How is tonight different from yesterday, a year ago? Yeah, I remember being a lot more relaxed the first year. <laughs> 185.1. The night of the win, it was, you know, how you doing? Head nod, but it's kind of like meeting an ex-girlfriend, right? There was this anxiety or this uncomfortableness. You get a quick hug? Which I don't have with anybody. Are you the champion? <laughs> <laughs> the day in the fight, my fortune family, without my knowledge, paid for my parents to fly out and to stay in the city. <laughs> the last time uh, I saw my parents for my dad, it was about six years ago. Uh, they live in Saskatoon, so it's tough to get out there. It was emotional. It has been way too long. It was way too long. Like, Bring in, bring in the folks, huh? Bring in the folks. I didn't say
I came out and I just wasn't working. I didn't know how to connect with them. So after that first time I sat down with Anna and she's like, just push for it. Just keep throwing that jab. Throw it until he just kind of crumbles in and it starts wailing. Adam, amazing guy and I, I have had such a pleasure getting to know him. Uh, and I'm really glad I kicked his ass. thing that other people deserve a chance to do too, you know, that's why we do it. But one of the largest challenges for me to overcome that day was just the actual waiting game. There was a room in the back in the dressing room, you know, where all the fighters could watch. I couldn't even do that. Deep down inside, I was going a thousand miles an hour, man. Pressure of like 400 plus people chanting for you or against you. Yes, I was nervous. That's being human. But good thing, you know, part of me isn't. I'm part machine too. I had a lot of support, friends, family, co-workers. They were all supporting me in their own ways, whether it be online donations, buying a chopper t-shirt, got these made up. Everyone was so proud to wear it. You know, everyone from my friends that I barely talked to, to my closest family members. Nice job, <laughs> Big sweaty hug, buddy. Mom, Dad. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> so proud of you. Grandpa, who's 83 years old. My sister watched the online feed in Australia. <laughs> Aunts, uncles, cousins. The one person who was rooting for me the most was there too. That was my grandma. Got a lot of my uh, my big heart from her. Told me. She would have been proud of me. Jose didn't really sleep much last night, so got some nerves, some anxiety. It's officially time to begin this year's It's interesting how it really is muscle memory because you don't really, you can't like plan what's happening, you're kind of just doing it as it's going. She looked at me right after and she was like, she gave this face to me like, you really hit me hard. And I was like, oh God. As a real boxer, you should react to that and be like, okay, like I got them good, like now I attack. But for me, it's like startling. I'm like, oh, like I really hit her. Like, what do I do now, you know? Like I don't have that instinct to keep attacking, I think. So that was kind of interesting. I was in shape, but I wasn't prepared to deal with the stress and the anxiety. That's like, I don't think you can prepare for that unless you've done it like a thousand times. I felt really tired after even the first round and, and I've never felt that tired in all the training, which is sometimes harder than the actual fight. was really cool. She came in the night before and then left the next morning. So she was the, she was in Vancouver for less than 24 hours just to watch me fight. I have no doubt that she's going to do just an awesome job against her own. I didn't have anything to lose last year. I know that I can outbox her and that's all I got to do.
didn't get to see her much during training, so I had no idea where she was at. Yeah, I was scared, man. Like, I was, I didn't want to lose. As soon as my music came on and I started to walk out there, I was just like, like, in the zone, and I was just on fire. I just remember getting hit in the head and going, okay, you don't have headgear on, so you better keep your hands up and you better start hitting her back. We went at it. Um, it she did so much better than I anticipated her doing. Yeah, she killed it. It was a really tough match. It was super disappointing, like for my own self, is just going, I could have pushed so much harder and I don't know why like I was holding myself back. You'll always think and find something that you wish you could have done better or done more of. So for me, I just could have put more pressure on. I thought that we both put up a pretty good fight. For me, it was, it was anybody's fight, and I was really happy when Shay got it. Whether it was a boxing match or not, Abdul Fadel has over 100 amateur fights. They might have been judo fights, they might have been other types of combat, but those were over 100 fights. He had that patience there, he had that ready. Stu goes in with no competition background, period, and has an absolute war, goes back to back with uh, a 2012 Olympian. So just to see that from uh, just a quaint little guy working in the taco truck made me pretty happy. It was the second last fight of the night, so I fought before Chris and uh, Simon. Come get it, that's for you, Steve. I heard the hype, the people, oh, like the entourage and the music, and I was already tired, actually. All the stress and everything, like when I walked into the, the ring, like my leg was wobbling, everything it was pretty, it was pretty crazy. So much nerves, it's yeah. crazy. You, know, even, you think even doing the second year would be, it would be easier. First round, accidentally hit me with an elbow, which broke an orbital bone in my, in my eye, caused my the whites of my eye to hemorrhage. So I ended up seeing four of him, just double vision the entire fight. And it sucked, I thought I was, thought I was gonna get knocked out. I thought it was getting knocked out feels like. I've never been knocked out in a ring. Something happened, like I touched him with a elbow, kind of, I hurt his eye a little bit. I didn't really realize, no one said, I didn't even feel, I didn't even feel it. I mean, and whatever, right? It's boxing, you know, it just, it happens, it's part of the sport. I said, I can't see it. He's like, I've seen two or three yeah, scenes. I've been in situations where it's not so much the pain that, uh, that hurts, but the thought of, uh, the thought of uh, permanent damage is running through your mind the whole time. It's a, it can be a distraction. But either way, I think you've seen more than one that fight. You've seen it's a lot more natural, a lot more, uh, a lot more skilled. Still the world's best dad. Sucks losing twice. <laughs> Takes a little bit of the hit to the ego, but I mean, that's... There's winners and losers in this competition, so it's got to kind of pick yourself up and you know, keep going. It's okay now. It's all good. It, looks, it still looks ready.
pretty anxious about the whole thing. And then when I came around, my mom was already there, she's standing, and you know, you get a little bit emotional. It's nice to get a little pep talk from uh, the folks before you get, get into the ring boxes. They were pretty nervous. They don't want to see me, you know, get hurt. Walking into the ring, I, you know, was there. I was focused, I was driven. I, you know, I had the same music I had last year. It was, it was a familiar feeling. You know, we'd both been there before. And then, yeah, getting into the ring, it was everything. I was like, okay, it's go time. It's, it's, you know, it's only six minutes. Um, you've trained for this and, and you want it, so let's do it. Having Oreski and Brian McCorner was like perfect. Like, those guys really like calmed my ass down, got me to focus. I remember Brian actually a few times, keep that left hand glued to your chin. Like just going off and making sure that I was defending myself. I, I don't really remember. I thought that I knocked him down. They called it a slip. If you see some of the pictures, it, it, you know, you can take it either way. Defensive fight for sure. You know, six minutes is, is a very short period of time. My majority decision, I knew. Doing what I did and coming out on top and has really meant a lot to me and, and my growth. Nobody gets in the ring to, to come on second, right, when there's only two competitors. I was more just fucking upset and disgusted with my performance. I know I'm better than what I did. Yeah, and Chris came out on top, so kudos to him. My hat's off to him. We talked that night about a rematch, and we were both down for it with uh, him opening up Mammy Taylor's. You know, granted, I'm sure he didn't get in the ring as much as uh, he wanted to. So if we could do like a, a third and final, you know, rubber match to just kind of squash it all and then move on, that'd be rad. Uh, when there's a draw, like I'd, I'd love to do it again. I learned a lesson this year that I, that I think maybe Chris learned the year before he didn't give the sport or me the respect that I deserved. And this year, it, I got caught with it. Chris, this rematch is gonna happen. Um, I hope that you are focused for it um, because I'm gonna fucking put 110 times more effort into it than I did this past year because I'm not losing again. The last time when Aprons for Gloves ended, we didn't have a gym to go to. It's kind of everyone just kind of stopped and waited. This time, everyone was in on the Monday training. That was absolutely awesome to see. There's like eight-year-olds, 11-year-olds, kids up to late teens. Uh, there's a lot of Kimber girls that are competitive. There's a couple of pros that are here mixing with like the girls that are brand new, like the kids that are brand new, the guys that are new. Uh, we've got a lot of people coming because there's a bit of hype now. People have heard about it. We've been starting to build capacity and starting to, you know, put our roots out into the community and work with a bunch of different organizations within Strathcona and the downtown east side. We have some kids programs going. Um, we have a women's program. And ever since I've been here, I've helped keep me sober and I don't fight as much. I kind of copes with my anger. It kept me from like going out on the weekends and smoking and drinking and stuff with friends, right? I was always on my mind was just about training and getting in shape and staying healthy. Helps me stay out of trouble. It's really cool to see them coming in here and doing something positive for themselves. Looking up to us who have been in the program before and kind of, I don't know, it's just, it's nice. It's rewarding feeling, you know what I mean? Like we did this for, not only for ourselves, but for all of these kids that can come here and get some love. I come here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday when it's open. I come after school every day. I look forward to coming. Everyone's really friendly and they help you out a lot. So it's easier to learn. You walk in here, uh, whether you're coaching the morning or the evening session, and 
smile, nothing but smiles on our faces. As you see, we have anywhere from 20 to 30 kids uh, training here at each day, and then they're asking you, when can I come back? Are you open at other hours? Are you open at other hours? If I wasn't here, I'd be at home playing video games and lazing around on the couch. This is a crazy workout. Like, I love the workout, and I kind of like a challenge, so it's, it's good. It's good for me. Like boxing, it does nothing but good. You know, go to the gym and get to meet other fighters and boxers, guys, and the professionals, right? And like, you sometimes you wish like you want to be there too one day. People often have this misconception that boxing is just about getting in there and like getting your aggression out and like being angry, but it really has nothing to do with being angry. It's like controlled sort of expression of, of energy and frustration, but it's like in a very controlled, um, safe environment. And I think it teaches people discipline. Um, I think it teaches them, you know, camaraderie and like to work together. It has a lot of um, really transferable skills that people can use in real life. Everything in here just calms me down more. I don't fight on the streets anymore. Sparring, want to become amateur. Seeing all the kids that are benefiting and having all the gym space, it's been awesome to be a part of. It. In the effort of everybody through Aprons for Love, you know, this thing became huge and finally built us a gym. Built a gym for the community, I'm happy it's around now. Just trying to get it out there and, and get more membership, because really at the end of the day, like we need that membership to be sustainable. Now that Aprons for Gloves is over and all of us can, who are helping out with the event, we can actually focus on our boxing. We were matched for the World Boxing Council Canadian Featherweight Championship against a guy from Ontario. We flew into uh, the Cascades Casino in Langley. It might have been a month and a half of actual training camp for this, but we've been training for this for six years. And uh, the night couldn't have gone better and we had, I guess, about 70 people from the Aprons for Gloves community come all the way to Langley, made more noise than the whole 600 in attendance to know the importance of uh, what would happen to Eastside Boxing Club knowing that uh, a win gets us the Canadian title. It's great to put all that stuff that we've been practicing in the last you know, couple years with Abrams and actually be able to fight for our club and fight for Eastside Boxing. It's been a long road. I mean, it's been almost, I guess, a year and a half and two years, and we finally got the space, and we finally got the ring and the bags, and we start getting people in, and you know, it's just really symbolic to be able to put that sign up on our space and finally claim it. You know what I mean? And I think that, that that's it's going to be a really cool thing to finally have that up. major fire. I looked, the sign was melted. I saw a lot of damage inside. Everything was melted and burnt and I just knew it was no good for us. Yeah, it's kind of hard to walk in there after the amount of time we spent uh, putting all this stuff together and seeing what happened. Um, and I know that a lot of other businesses suffered from, you know, uh, below us, but uh, it had a pretty big impact on us. No, we don't want to wait. Like, we don't have really, there's not really wait. time to wait, right? Like, we, it's, it's, it's been two years to get to this spot, you know, Friday night, what, November 1st, and then November 2nd, we're almost back to like where we started from. Every time that momentum gets broken, we lose kids uh, doing other stuff and, and people and gym membership and everything. This is a step back, but it's not like the end for us, right? Like we do have, we have the interest, we have the people, we have like the program in place, you know, all the equipment, we could get new equipment, right? Everything that we can't use, we can get again, uh, but we need the space. Seems like a bad thing today, and it was hard to see on Saturday. But in some ways, you know, the to realize the amount of support that we do have in the community and what's happened and stuff has actually been, you know, even more eye-opening than the stuff we've already achieved. So in a lot of ways, I think that we can go from here and even take this thing even further now.